stinky. This is great. This is the way it life should be. Amy Zyke has a good life. Go. Good girl, Sam. Playing catch with her precious Sammy. Good girl, Sam. Outside her beautiful home in Bethlehem, PA. So how was school? Good. good. Yeah, good. homework? A longtime teacher, she keeps tabs on her children, Colin, 10, and Maddie, 13. How's your knee feeling? Feeling better, it just hurts. Maddie's pain and misery from a soccer injury is yeah. clear to see. <laughs> but Amy's suffering, not so much. My life wasn't real. She was hiding a dark secret behind her bright smile and cool persona. I wanted to still be that superstar. I still wanted to be that princess and look the way I thought I should look. In her words, a trophy wife, a mega mom, a real superwoman. Just be what people would look at and say, wow, look at her, she has it all. Can I have dressing? and she really knows her way around the kitchen, still. It wasn't real. Because she wasn't eating. And putting food in my body was almost a sign of weakness for me. For me, food was just for someone else, for my children, for my husband, you know, just wasn't for me. I would sit next to people eating it and think, oh, you know, I really would love to have a piece of that cobbler or some, some ice cream or something. It just wasn't, in my mind, allowed. She started filling up, drinking a lot of water. I hid it from everyone until it came to a point where I couldn't hide it anymore. She plummeted into deep depression. This 45-year-old success was starving. I was. I was 100 pounds, maybe. Wow, how tall are you? 5'3". Yeah. yeah, it, no, it was not good. Thinking she might not live to see her kid's next birthday. My husband came to me one morning and said, we need help. She checked into the Renfrew Center for Eating Disorders in Philadelphia, where until now, doctors may have said Amy's much too old for this. But a stunning recent survey found Amy is actually a youngster compared to the 79% of older women who link their weight, shape, and food to their self-esteem. And about half of them did yo-yo diets and marathon workouts, still. The body betrays them in a way leaving more than 13% of the women, 50 and older, struggling with serious eating disorders like anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating. So there's a certain subset of women that are vulnerable, and you give that vulnerable woman the right environment, and an eating disorder will present itself. Like coping with a crisis or a life-changing event, and a greater need these days to compete with younger women at the office. So absolutely, competition is a key thing among women. And this kind of social pressure is inescapable on stands right now, humiliating photos of stars who dare to gain a pound, even if they just had a baby. And never-ending get-then-quick promises, flawless airbrushing, and photoshopping. We have to sort of try to push back all those messages that bombard women all the time. At Renfrew, medical director Dr. Susan Ice says younger patients fare better from the physical damage of eating disorders, but older women recover much quicker. And it's not who can get thinner, it's who can get healthier. It can take clearing out kitchen and bathroom cabinets. So homework is done. And scheduling meals. I feel fabulous now. And looking forward to eating with her family. The taste of food now is amazing. She's an outpatient at Renfrew now, and Dr. Ice is proud of her progress, courage, and determination to help others. But just to be brave, and just to realize, and that this is your life, and to live your life.